On Monday, Arise News sister publication, This Day Newspapers, in an exclusive report, laid bare the increasing spate of conflicting court orders and rot in the Nigerian judicial system. Not only have indiscriminate ex parte orders and injunctions granted by courts of coordinate jurisdiction been contradictory, they pose a clear and present threat to the nation's burgeoning democracy. Chiefly, most of the conflicting orders pertain to political cases and highlight the ease with which judges have allowed themselves to be manipulated by senior lawyers during the bidding of self-serving politicians. Fortunately, the story in this day was sufficiently embarrassing to prompt the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, and the Nigerian Bar Association into action. By Tuesday, Justice Mohammed had summoned the six Chief Justices judges of Rivers, Imo, Anambra, Cross River, Jigawa, and Kebi states to explain the indiscriminate orders granted by their courts. The NBA president, Olumide Akpata, also condemned in the strongest terms the unfortunate and recurring trend of contradictory court decisions. He called on members of the bar to also look inwards and call out its members, mostly senior members, who continue to yield themselves to be used as willing tools by politicians to wantonly abuse the judicial process. Now joining us to discuss what needs to be done to stem the tide of conflicting rulings by the High Courts and at the Nigerian Courts of Appeal is Abiodun J. Owoniko a senior advocate of Nigeria. Welcome and good morning, Mr. Wonikoko. Good morning. It's my pleasure to join you this morning. Well, thank you very much. Great to hear your voice, doctor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Well, Tunu already uh, laid it all it's on pleasure. the table. Uh, first, the abuse of uh, expatriate orders and uh, courts of uh, coordinate jurisdiction uh, working at uh, cross purposes, and lawyers forum shopping from uh, Calabar, from uh, Degema Port Court to uh, Kebi, back to uh, Calabar, who knows where they will go next. Uh, and in the process, violating the rules of professional conduct. What's your take? Why is this so? My take as a practicing lawyer uh, can only be summarized by the swift response of the Honorable the Chief Justice of Nigeria yesterday. Uh, His Lordship acted for those of us who hold high the values that underpin this profession. We have to appreciate that lawyers, whether those on the bench or those in practice have a special place of pride in our democracy. Our profession is the only one specially recognized and entrenched for perpetual existence in the constitution of Nigeria. No other profession has its name mentioned and specifically conferred with any role in our governance structure, except the legal profession. Beyond that, of the three arms of government, the only arm that professionals who are unelected are permitted to play the decisive role is the justice sector, the judiciary. And it therefore confers upon us great and enormous responsibility. When you begin to experience, which is not new, sadly, the saga of conflicting ex parte orders in politically sensitive and high profile cases, the public is entitled to suspect that something is amiss and thereby eroding the confidence which we owe a duty to ensure we keep inviolate in the minds of the Nigerian populace. Ex parte order, as they are, are orders that are granted without the merit of a case being interrogated. But on the presentation of a case of unusual emergency, a real urgency, without which the court's intervention may lead to greater harm to the litigant. 
So when it is granted, if at all, and really should it be, it must be very, very carefully worded. I say this because I cannot fathom how it is possible for the matter, for instance, involving PDP's national executive having to be commenced in three different states of the Federation at the same time, all by non role actors. I've not heard of these cases that any member of the ESCO of the party was the one that went to court. I've heard of one or two or three members of the party instituting action in River State, in Kirby State, in Cross River State, and the courts finding it expedient to listen to them and grant them reliefs that has no personal benefit for them. So I really don't even begin to know how they were able to satisfy the court of the exigency of the court granting them such orders on interim hearing, ex parte hearing. Because it's not about somebody is about to be killed illegally and he ran to court and say, if this order is not granted today, tomorrow will be too late for me. I will be a dead meat. What, for instance, is the basis on which members of political party will go to Kirby State and get the judge in Kirby State grant another, not for themselves, but for the person they have sued. In the Kirby case, for instance, party members sued, joined the party and uh, Chief Secondos and sought an order of court asking Chief Secondos to continue to act in his capacity as chairman of the party. Regardless of the sentiment, I cannot in all my very dutiful search into our jurisprudence, locate anywhere that a party will go to court to seek redress in favor of the defendant he has sued and without even hearing the defendant. Uh, it was late chief uh, MK Abiola, may God bless his soul, who popularized the saying that you do not shave a man's head behind his back. Supposing Secondus was tired of the office and you went to Kirby State, sued him without serving him, and got the court in Kebi to impose on him the duty, honorable duty of continuing to run the party. That worries me so much as to wonder how the judge who heard the matter was himself able to be persuaded that this was a proper order to make. Let me also immediately sound a point of uh, uh, caution and interest. Don't forget, all these orders were obtained in the last two weeks. The funny thing is that all our courts presently are on vacation. So invariably, the judges that are sitting during vacation are judges that ordinarily should be on leave, but have been placed to sit and, head and hear urgent cases, which they are not likely to be the one to conclude. Grant some interim reprieve that will prevent the wall from the, the sky from falling down, and then take your leave. In those situations, it is even more worrisome that those judges just began to dish out, I'm sorry to say, ex parte order of injunction as if it's a shop right uh, item that you pick from the shelf. Um, so when my lord, the chief justice, invited the chief judges of the courts, of the various high courts where these orders were obtained, I felt a bit relieved because as the heads of those courts, it is not impossible that even now, most of them are on vacation. Chief judges are hardly ever vacation judges. They appoint among the, their peers those who would sit in for others while everybody else goes for refresher holidays and come back to resume work. So it's a good development that the, CJ has, the CJN has taken this bold step. And I believe that they are going to have frank talk with each other. Beyond that, People should not trail a uh, light of action on the judges alone. The greater part of the problem is blamable on counsel. Particularly now that I read the NBA indicating that most of these orders are obtained by very senior members of the bar, which is very sad. Don't forget, this MPDP crisis about four years ago consumed the career of a senior advocate of Nigeria. 
when they had internal party crisis and there were issues having to do with election, primaries of uh, do state gov uh, governorship between, I think, Jimo Ibrahim and Tayo Jegede SAN. And the party's division created the problem and they were litigating it all over the place. A member of the Inaba took it upon, him, upon himself to play Jankara uh, practice and incidentally for the first time that I can recall, a petition was lodged against him, not by, not by, by litigants, but by the Justice of the Court of Appeal to the Legal Partitional Pledges Committee and a decision was taken to withdraw his rank of Senior Advocate of Nigeria. So you wonder why did people not learn from the misfortune that that brother Silk, as he then was, brought upon himself and beat a note of caution. No matter how tempting the offer of reward may be, our primary responsibility as lawyers and more so as senior advocate of Nigeria, first and foremost, is to be ministers in the temple of justice. Well, amen to your prayer, first of all. But um, the president of the MBA, uh, Mr. Lumidi Akpata, has talked about deterrence options that the MBA will be employing. Do you think that it will take the form of what you just described was the fate of you know, the learned silk? And also, beyond the sort of terse meeting that we can imagine is going to take place between the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the judges that he has summoned, what kind of deterrence will he employ? Uh, thank you. I must commend Mr. President of MBA for his very robust response to this development. He's the number one legal practitioner in Nigeria, and his lead is what we all follow. Um, however, I think we have to be careful from unnecessarily demonizing the senior ranks. This rot has eaten and permitted through all ranks of the profession. But unfortunately, the cases that make the news are the high-profile cases. And as you will expect, a number of them tend to be under management of very senior lawyers. But this rot happens on a daily basis. And we must beam such light on ourselves collectively. That said, leaders as mentors, as inspiration givers, must live above board. We must shine the light the right way. And one thing I have observed is we pledge oath of allegiance. We pledge oath of office. In Nigeria, we don't pledge oath of commitment. And that's what I see is missing. Because if you check all the rules of ethics for the lawyers and the code of conduct for judges, there is hardly anything that has happened in the last two weeks that the rules have not provided for in terms of sanctioning, in terms of prohibiting, and in terms of provision for how they are to be handled. But do we have the will? Even as judges, I wish to commend, for instance, Judge Salawa of Court of Appeal, then now of the Supreme Court, who led the move to go after our colleague that so misconducted himself before their lordships in that matter and led to his rank being withdrawn. I think CJs of the various courts should begin to take note of some of these developments and initiate, because we have this inbreeding restraints from one to report on each other as lawyers. But a judge who is the master of his court and who has superintendent's power over us can see better from a helicopter view what we do. And they should be able to, as time goes on, initiate disciplinary actions and initiative against erring members of the profession. If that begins to happen more, as I believe should be one of the outcome of this rapprochement between the CJN and the CJs that have been invited. I think a lot of our colleagues will uh, begin to exercise greater discretion in what they do. Beyond that, at the level of the bar itself, we must uh, speak truth to ourselves. The profession is really endangered. People are fast losing confidence and trust, not just in the court, but even in us as lawyers. I do not know why it has become difficult for colleagues who are approached by by clients with sentimental cases that has no chance of success in court, do not, you know, uh, uh, honestly advise that there is no room for this matter and therefore advise and let them shift their sword. The case of party, internal party politicking and dissension is a path 
that the court has beaten very, very uh, proficiently. In the case of uh, Dalhatu and Turaki, we had events and occasions like this. We had cases were filed and injunctions were being obtained all over the place. And somebody came to Abuja in a matter that has to do with Jigawa party primaries to obtain an order after he had lost out in the primary. The, spring, the judge gave him uh, uh, the, 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 the judge gave him judgment on appeal. Uh, the judge gave him judgment and refused to follow Onoha, where the Supreme Court has said that issue of who the party feels for an office or are all internal and political questions which the court will not normally descend upon. The court can decide whether, having done what they have done, they have acted in accordance with law, but not to preempt them and prevent the political parties like companies or association from exercising their own internal prerogatives. At the end of the day, the Supreme Court made that clear that, in fact, Abuja had no business entertaining a case, Federal, court of, Federal FCTI court had no business entertaining a case involving primaries of governorship in Jigawa. But what do we see now? I do not see how the same issue of secondos chairmanship as giving cause of action in Kebi, in Cross River, in Rivers, all at the same time. The political party that is in issue has its headquarters in Abuja, is a national body created under the, under the Electoral Act. Why would you go to Cross River to go and fight over leadership of a national, not state chairmanship of the party, national chairmanship of the party? Why would you go to Kebi to go and obtain another to uh, ask him to continue in office? Why would you even go to Rivers to obtain another, suspending him without hearing him? What is the urgency? Somebody has been there for like three, four years as chairman. What does it take you to put him on notice? and all the affected party on notice, and hear them on the merits, even during vacation. You can as well abridge time, rather than granting that kind of uh, far-reaching party order, abridge time and uh, hear all the parties and give judgment. We all witnessed what happened in America during the last presidential election. Judgment cases were heard in two, three-day judgments were handed down. They accelerated processes and streamlined proceedings. If it is that pressing, Knowing that the order you are going to make has to affect a party that has millions and millions of followership, whose own interests you have not had a chance to review, it will appear to me that the better course was, even if they make such a vociferous case, you ask them to put the other party on notice, abridge okay. their time, and hear them. Okay. So I believe that... Uh, Okay. Uh, explains where we should be heading now. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Do I still sense that you know dichotomy between senior lawyers and lawyers that are not SCN? Because uh, the statement of the MB, uh, MBA chairman was clear, president was clear. You know, senior lawyers were found culprit in this, and you're saying let's not overly demonize the senior lawyers. So do I still find that dichotomy? Because that was what characterized even the elections of the MBA if we remember that process. That's one. Number two will be, yes, it's so easy to say political parties are getting, you know, this ex parte, like selling, uh, getting all these injunctions. Some people will say, well, how about, you know, security agents, agents and government security agencies, you know, how they get this ex parte to detain people and put them perpetually in jail. You know, that's another part to it. Why, some people say, why is the CGA not speaking up about that granted to government security agents? Well, uh, I think I will address the security issue first. Uh, we all know the reason why the entire country is comatose today. It's a challenge of security. So sometimes a lot of issues that go into security considerations are not always too open to public scrutiny. And so I would uh, uh, want to uh, grant that in some instances, there may be justification with the conscience even itself allows for some of these kind of preventive orders to be obtained as party, provided that uh, they are, the orders are properly worded, they are restrained in their operation, and the return date is not unduly long as to essentially undo the whole justification for the order. Uh, and I do not expect the CGN, knowing that I, the case may end up in his court, beginning to make other, uh, comments about orders made by trial courts. If anybody has an issue about that, there is a procedure by which a report can be made, complaint can be lodged, and it will be investigated either against the judges or for the security agencies there. They don't go to court to ask for this order. They use lawyers to ask for this order. Don't forget, even when the CGN was to be removed by ex order, even in the Code of Conduct Tribunal, 
It was a lawyer that went to argue it, ostensibly not even in, in, the, open, in the well of the court, but in the, somewhere in the night. So it still boils down to the duty we owe as professionals to know that to whom much is given, much is rightfully expected. That's for that one. And on the issue of dichotomy, I, I think for now, the dichotomy issue was a political electioneering matter. It is not a real dichotomy. Uh, as I'm talking to you now, over, we are aware of a number of, oh, probably over 100 of our junior colleagues who are aspiring, who have been screened for appointment to the position, to the rank of senior advocate of Nigeria. If that dichotomy was there, you would expect that people who are not SA would never apply for, to be considered for that rank. Uh, election time comes, a lot of things is uh, fair and foul. But I can tell you that even Mr. Akpata himself, he has in his own chambers, senior advocate of Nigeria, and he knows the value that that brings, and he knows the rigorous process that they went through before they made the rank. That is not to say that there are no misgiving about some of our senior colleagues who actually flaunt the rank and abuse it for purposes that are unbecoming of the exalted position. And it is for those ones I say, the law should not be lenient. In fact, if the law will be lenient with the young lawyers, there is no reason why it should be with somebody who the whole country has elevated and, and raised up as having achieved the highest distinction in the profession. You expect that that decision should ooze from his actions, his words, and his deeds. So I say that the MBA must, not as a divided body, but as one, come together and address the slight that the profession is falling into. Not only for our own purpose, but even for the entire country and the generation yet unborn. We inherited this profession for a reason. It was a profession of pride, a profession of dignity, a profession that was respected and was giving value to society that people didn't have to debate whether you should respect a lawyer. It was given that you have to respect because we were earning it. It is no longer easy to make that kind of claim today, unfortunately. And we must do internal self-regulation and address some of this. Thank you. <clears throat> well, very quickly, we're almost running out of time, but just to interrogate your optimism about the step that has been taken about the CJ uh, of the Federation in its capacity as chairman of the National Judicial Council. Look, as you yourself pointed out, we've been on this matter of abuse of uh, procedures and ex parte orders for more than 20 years. In fact, since as far back as 1985, as recently as 2018, Justice Kafarati, uh, you know, even told uh, uh, judges not to get involved in uh, uh, political cases and uh, ex parte orders. But nothing has ever happened. Why are you so optimistic that this time around, we will not one year down the line be faced with a similar situation? What needs to be done to make sure that the judges uh, respect the rules and also that lawyers uh, behave as officers in the temple of justice? My optimism stems from the maturity that the Chief Justice of Nigeria has brought to bear on this and the collaborative support that the MBA has come out to offer. Not only to say that those who, are, who have erred should be punished, but that the MBA itself must address the problem. And uh, for that reason, I think also when we look at our environment, the space in which we practice, it's not always that all the rules and regulations are perfect. Occasions like this prevents us, pre presents us with opportunity to look at what needs to be done better. I have identified two that I believe my Lord, the CJN and the judges that are going to meet uh, can consider. There is presently, for instance, now, some rules of court that require that when you are filing an action, you swear to an affidavit of norm or simplicity of action, that you have not, there are no other cases of the similar nature as at the time you are filing. I think beyond that, we must also introduce a provision that also makes the lawyer filing the process to swear that there has been no order of a court of coordinate jurisdiction that impacts on the order you are seeking. So that when eventually you get that order, you put yourself on the spot, if it turns out like we now see, it was public knowledge that different courts have made orders, and yet other courts have seen the approach and getting ex parte order. If that can be introduced, because in the National Judicial Council uh, regulation, there is provision for 
what is what they call collaboration policy, where all the stakeholders can be brought to, to together and chart a path to address lacunas we have identified. I think this is one. No political case should be filed now without the lawyer filing, swearing to an affidavit that he is not aware and he has made inquiry that a case of similar nature is not yet pending in another court, even if there was no order in that case. If we introduce this, for instance, it will cast upon counsel the obligation to do due diligence and now not claim ignorance, because this is what I mean. We might say we have read this in papers, but somebody might claim I don't read papers anymore. He might say we saw it in a particular social media. He might say that's not his favorite. So he didn't get to know when he went to file. But when we introduce kind of a pre-action requirement of non-existence of previous litigation on the same matter, I believe it will address part of the problem. Secondly, a judge that makes an order that is apparently, obviously indefensible in law has no business to be on the bench. Regardless of the the gamesmanship of the lawyer, a judge supposed to be the bosom of the law. He should know when he is being gamed, unless there is more to it than meet the eye. When a judge does that kind of thing, the consequence should be severe wow. enough to serve as proper deterrent. Yeah. I believe this too should be part of what we see coming out of the intervention by the Chief Judge of Nigeria. Well, thank you very much, uh, A.J. Obonio Koko, for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed for your insights. Thank you.